In today's video, we're learning how to make these professional thumbnails all the way from scratch in Canva. So we're not going to use any Photoshop at all. We're going to recreate it, see how these big YouTube channels do it and how you can create it. Now for this tutorial, I'm choosing a example from a famous YouTube channel called Magnets Media. And you might wonder like, how do you recreate those really nice thumbnails? Because they're very catchy. So what we'll do is we'll look at one of the popular videos that we have here from the channel and we're going to try to recreate that thumbnail that we see here on the screen. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because one of you first asked on how to make these sort of thumbnails and two, because a lot of people think they need Photoshop for it, but it's actually more important to have a creative site and know how to do it creatively rather than the tools you have available. So you can easily do this in Canva and get a really nice result that gets you like 99% of the way there. And here we're starting from a blank slide in Canva. I'm using the YouTube thumbnail settings. So if you want to have the file format, it's the YouTube thumbnail setting that is available. You can always resize it if you have a different one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut or paste the original thumbnail that I took a screenshot of just so we have a reference of how we want to build this up and that is easy for us to look at. Now what I want to do first of all is sort of break it down. What sort of elements do we have and what do we need to build this up from scratch? Now looking at this design there's first of all the main thing is a picture that jumps out. There's some elements so there's the text elements dark truth then there's the big pile of money in front and behind the character. And then if we look more in depth towards the background, we can see a few more things. We can see a gradient going from a orange center towards a darker red tone outwards. So we have that circular gradient. We also have these light rays appearing. And then we have some oil rig vector graphics sort of setting the scene. Now, of course, there's also these blood splats on the screen on both the money and the person itself. And we have that outline glow. So there's a lot of elements that we're going to add into this picture. Now, when you start working on these sort of designs, you want to build it up in layers. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do that step by step. Let's start with the background layer, which is getting the color scheme or like that gradient in the background. So for that, we're going to select the background, go to background colors, and we want to have a gradient fill. So for that, I'm choosing the one that is closest, the red to orange but we're going to adjust this. So we're going to set this to circular and then we want to have the light point in the middle. So I'm just going to drag them around and this already looks like it has that expansion effect that light in the middle and darker towards the outsides. Now we're going to readjust the color. So we have a vibrant orange in the middle and then a darker, more vibrant red towards the outside. So I'm going to select and in this one, I'm going to turn it to a red and this one more towards an orange, maybe slightly more yellow feel. I think this is sort of what we have in the background. So that's pretty good. Next, we're going to look at those vector graphics. So those oil rigs in the background, we're going to try to add a dose. And for that, I think we can use the elements library here. If we do oil rig and then go for graphics, we can already see some pretty good examples here that we can just add to the screen. And I think this sort of tower, maybe that's a bit too playful. So I'm going to go for a more serious one, just like this and see what else we can find that sort of fits the theme. I think if we add another one of those, we can maybe flip it around horizontally to have some variation. We can scale it up and down, maybe another tower here on the side. And then in the magic recommendations, I'm pretty sure we can find another one that sort of fits the scene. We can always narrow it down to oil refinery and that gives us some other alternative options. But we for sure want to look for those like filled icons without too much detail because they shouldn't distract in the background. And then you can add some of those to the slide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy a few, flip them around, give them different sizes. So everything looks organic. Now we can see we're using different colors here. So if I look back, this has a bit of a red tone to it. So I'm going to make it not entirely black, but like a brownish, very dark brown or red color. So I'm going to try to find one of those and use that as a color, maybe a bit more towards the red side. I think that will be fine. And then I'm just going to change the other ones as well. Just give them that same color. Now in the beginning, it might not look like we're getting there, but you have to sort of trust the process in this case. I'm going to add a rectangle to build like a solid floor for those items and then place them on top. So we have this set up. Now I'm going to select them all and group together. So we act as one shape and I'm going to put that to the background. So it's already there since it's the first item that we have. Now what we can do since this is very harsh and here it's very soft, we can just select the items, go to transparency and already tune it down a bit. 
And you can see now it's taking more of a background feeling, a background element in design. That's what we want to achieve. So it's very subtle in the background, nothing too harsh and too much catching our attention. Now I think we need to look for a nice picture of the person. So I'm just going to go to YouTube and find a picture of John D. Rockefeller. And then I'm just going to drag it on the screen. So you can take any picture. It can be from any other character that you want. But you can see on the picture here, it's like he's partially cut off and on both the bottom side and the shoulder as well. But we can work with that. So you don't need the perfect image. You can sometimes work and tweak it around. So I'm going to remove the background, increase it in size and just look at the reference. He's looking the other way and you can see his shoulder is also covered a little bit. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to flip it horizontally, make it quite large since he's a center figure. And we have this chair here. We don't like that. So we go to edit, we go to magic eraser, and then we just erase that part of the chair. Erase. And normally it will do quite a good job. There we go. That looks perfect. So you can hardly see that it was there in the first place. So I'm going to do it like this, maybe position him down a little bit, make him slightly larger. And that is already starting to come together in the composition. So we're trusting the process. We're adding layer by layer and sort of building it up there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for those dollar bills to stack them up. Important when we look at the dollar bills is that we have a layer in the background, so behind the subject, and we have a layer before the subject. So it sort of looks like he's in between. Let's go for the elements and here type in dollar bills stack. Let's see what we can find. Now you can always choose for graphics or photos. If you want a more realistic effect, you can do it like this, remove the background, and then have like realistic dollar bills. But in this case, we want to go for a more sort of cartoonish feeling that is not exactly realistic. So I'm going for the graphic section. Now you could take those, but they look a bit too cartoonish for me. So I'm going to go for one in the middle. This could already look something that we want to use. So let's try to find a, let's say dollar stack maybe. I think this will do. This is quite good. But if we compare it to the other stacks, those are very bright and very vibrant. And this one is kind of a mission missing that punch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one, go to edit and then go to adjust. I want to go to vibrance and then turn this one up so we can see it's becoming more green. Also for the color, I'm going to adjust the saturation a bit to get that color tone just right. Now this is quite large and if you enlarge it, you see that sort of vector graphic, you see it's not very realistic, but I think if we scale it down, could pull it off. And if we then copy it, flip it horizontally. So we have some variations with it and then just select multiple and sort of stack them around and just make sure that you don't do it in a pattern, but it's like scattered around. So you don't just copy it randomly or you do copy it randomly and you can always play around with the positioning, sending it to the back, maybe making the ones in the back a bit smaller. So we get some of that perspective and depth into the picture. And that's what we want to achieve. So I'm going to do it just like this, select those elements, deselect that background graphic and sort of group it together already. Then you can scale it up or down as you like, and maybe even create some more piles. I'm going to put another pile here. There we go. So this is going to be our background pile. So I'm going to select those and group them together as well. So it's act as one. Now we select the, oops, I have to group it again position layers and drag it underneath the picture of John D. Rockefeller. I'm going to duplicate that layer and bring it to the front. So make sure it's on top. Now here, what I want to do, let's ungroup it since we don't want the exact proportions. So this is going to be a bit too much. So I'm just going to repeat that, but I think I'll sort of drop this part. And then oops, if you, for example, like this, you lose the selection of all the, the elements, you can just go to the layers tab, select the first one, select the last one, hold shift, control G to group those together. So we can now recreate that front layer. We're going to do it just like this and create one on the other side. So we're already getting close to that feeling that we want. You can always put the ones in the back a bit lower and then you can put play around with the ones in the front, put them a bit higher. And now we want to look at that part where we cover up the mistakes or the inaccuracies. So for me, it's the shoulder that's really jumping out. So I'm going to select one of the items here. Let's ungroup that, cover it up with some bills and just try to mimic that, maybe drop him a bit lower. So what I'll do in this case is I'm just going to increase the picture size as well and then just drag it down a bit more. There we go. And make sure this one covers up the shoulder part, just like that. Now we can go to position and layers. I'm just going to group this again. So it's easy for me to select those items. If we just select them all and then group. 
That way we have a minimal amount of layers. So we can always just select the layers and maybe drag them downwards a bit. Do the same with the subject or increase it in size. So it's easy for us to play around with those elements. If we want to change the ones in the back, we can put these higher or lower, then it becomes flexible. And that's what we want to, that's what we want to achieve in our designs. So next I'm going to look for that array. So if we compare it, we now have sort of the basic shapes already set up. We're going to look at the details in the background. So we have that array, sort of those sun rays coming out. And also for that, I'm pretty sure there is a sun ray graphic available. Maybe not sun ray, but let's do just normal rays and try this one because it comes from the center. And if we then change the color to maybe something dark, this is turning gray. So I don't want that. I need the darkest version that I can get. So I'm going to look for other ones. And even if a graphic might not look like it's perfect in the first place. So for example, this, if I can make it dark and then increase it, this looks a bit weird, but if we now position it, we drag it underneath the subject and underneath that grouped item maybe. And then let's in reduce the transparency. So we make it very subtle. Then this suddenly becomes more realistic and it sort of feels like it belongs there a bit better. We can also put it behind those elements. There we go. And if we now maybe turn the transparency up a little bit on those background elements, I think that will be pretty good. Now we're getting closer and closer to the result, but I think the subject itself, if we look here, it has that red line and that red glow around the picture. So I'm going to select the image go to edit, go for shadows and then glow. And now it's a dark glow, like a shadow. But if I put this to red, that will already and increase the size, start to give that glow to our picture and to our subject. Then you might need to increase it a little bit again. And again, here, play around with the positioning of the items and the bills just until everything stays or feels nicely balanced. So this is pretty good. Now I'm going to look for those blood stains. So we have the blood stains on the bills, but also on the person itself. So I'm going to go for blood and in graphics, we have blood splatter. I think that will work for the bills. If we just paste a few, we can maybe make it a bit darker. Depending on the effect, you can make it very bright or go for somewhere in between. And I'm just going to hold the option or alt key and distribute a few of them, make some of them smaller, some of them larger on the graphics just around here. Now let's already take some of the larger splatters and paste them on like the, the notes, the bills. We're going to zoom in to make this a bit more realistic. And then I'm going to copy just a few change them in size. So we don't use the elements too much or it's not very visual or visible that we're using the same elements. So we want to scatter it around. We want to rotate it. We want to scale it a bit until it looks nice and realistic. If you really want to go further, you can always skew the blood stains to make them perfectly match. But I don't think that will be a necessary detail for a thumbnail. And then maybe some blood splatters on the, so let's go for this one and then position that behind the or just in front of the subject just like this so it's really showing the blood now let's rotate this one uh, maybe let's take another one blood splatter maybe we go for like an extreme one i think that will be better than this one just like that and then again here i'm going to group those together so they act as one and i can easily drag this one in between also here if you want to change the tone that could work you can make it slightly transparent you just have to play around with the setting see what feels right and how much of an emphasis you want to put on those things. Now we're getting closer. So what we'll do now is we'll look at the text and then maybe some of the clouds in the background. I'm not sure yet how we're going to do that. So let's do the text first title and we type in the words dark, make it larger. And now we can do two things. We can sort of look for a texture font and I think this one will work quite well. So it has that rough effect to it. That's a bit what it has here as well. So I'm going to use this, make it white. And then go for effects, outline, reduce the thickness of the outline. And let's make this black or almost black. We're using that same red tone to it. Just like this, we're going to make it and type in truth here. And now it's about positioning. So we want to have the center or the person not exactly in the center, but slightly to the left. So the word truth has more breathing room and we can make it quite large. Text also can go slightly behind the character, I think. So if we go to position, and drag these text below the person that sort of gives that a layered effect as well. And I kind of like that. So we're getting closer. Now here, I think they use some sort of a cloud behind it. 
I'm not sure how or what that is exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for some clouds or what I'll do is instead is I'll go for a vignette. I think that will work quite well on the image. So I'm going to choose a rectangular one, rotate it 16 by nine ratio, put it over the top just like this. And if it's too harsh, you can always scale it down just a little bit. And then if you want to adjust, you can just crop it. And I think we need some more contrast on the picture. So I'm going to send the picture, go to edit filters, or maybe let's adjust it ourselves. Brightness, we don't need that. So a little bit less. Contrast can be a bit harder. The highlights, it's already quite light. So I'm going to turn those down. Shadows can go up. I think the blacks can be improved just to 20. And then just play around until you have like a good feel of your image and it feels all just right. So let's do it like this and then take that vignette again and pull it up. Now this is still a bit too clean for me. So we, we have that more rough effect on the other image. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to look for some dust particles and paste them on the slide. I'm going to increase it and copy it. So we have them twice. Let's flip it horizontally. So there's no like pattern recognition that we can see and tune this down just a little bit. Let's say to 60, 70 ish. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be on the picture. So for that, I'm also going to drag those underneath the image and then play around with transparency. So this has that rougher effect to it. Also for the font, maybe it's a bit too clean. So for dark truth, maybe we go for a bit of a darker, though not pure white, but a bit more gray. And if we Maybe if we do it like this, we copy it and then select the bottom ones. And here I'm going to change the effect to like a lift. So it has that shadow effect to it as well. A bit of a shadow effect that never hurts your design, especially on text. And I think this way we're getting to a pretty good result. I'm just going to change the layers a bit so we don't have that gap. So just have to find those and drag that down. There we go. Just to fill it up, you can always hold the control key to select multiple of the layers and then play around with it like this, just like that. And then put the vignette back, transparency. Yeah, you can choose there what you what you want to achieve. But I think if we look at this result and let me put it on full screen and I kind of like how this turned out actually. And if we compare it to the previous one, let's say it's a bit different. I also don't have the high resolution image, but I think the elements are all brought back into place and we come to a pretty close result. You can always play around with the fonts if you want that more different fonts and branding, maybe some more contrast, different pictures. You can really choose how you do it, but the building of it and the layers, I think that really comes into place and we've seen sort of how it works and how you build up those sort of thumbnails. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the result that we achieved on this tutorial here and that thumbnail. So definitely let me know what you think in the comments below if you liked it. And if you want to see more of this, let me know as well. And I'll try to recreate what I can.